you guys so i am back one more time um and we are still working on those ultra high-waisted pants i feel like this is gonna end up being like a five-part series but let's see how it goes um let me just go ahead and jump on let's here Ooh, go ahead don't and talk okay so in case, sorry, I keep clapping. That is so annoying. Um, but in case uh, you are new, I just turn on the comments over here. That way I can actually read them because some people get annoyed when I ignore the comments and they're really far from you when they're on the computer. So, okay. What we're going to do today is we are going to finish up the pattern for the ultra high-waisted denim pants that I am making. And I already finished like the initial pattern that we started um, last time, which was just, I drew out the back of the, I let's explain this as clearly as possible. I laid down the slopers for the back and the front and then I traced them and then I started editing it based on how I want these pants to be. So I added in panels and then also that's what I did in the live stream. Outside of the live stream, I finished up the panels. I also flared out the bottom of the legs and I lifted the waistline two inches because, um, and let me look at this really quick, because this doesn't look like a full two inches. This actually looks like I lifted it one inch. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder why I lifted it one inch and I wanted to lift it two. We're gonna try leaving at the one inch and see how that fits. Uh, yeah, but I meant to lift it two and I just caught that right now when I was looking at it. I could tell that it definitely wasn't two inches. Hmm. That's slightly frustrating, but I already drew out all my panels, so we're going to try it like that. And then that's actually not a huge adjustment if we have to raise it up one inch. But so we never want to, let me go over this really quick. You never want to cut your initial pattern, like your first draft, where the back and the front are connected. You can be tempted sometimes. I definitely am because I tend to like to do things super quickly, but I really want this um, to this core template because if for some reason I don't like how the fit of the pants are, then I can always come back to this pattern and alter this slightly, retrace it onto my, um, onto like new sheets of paper, and then we'll have like, the perfect pattern rather than having to cut and tape and um, match pieces together over and over again to get the perfect fit. So this is a step I tend to skip. I usually just like to um, just start cutting the pattern. And so instead of like taking the time to trace it, cause you'll see, I'm going to trace some pieces and it does take a lot of time. Um, but I promise you it's worth it. So what I did is this is, um, you can't really see it, I'm sorry. Um, maybe if I tilt the camera for a second, just so you can see, I actually, no, you can't see it. I'm sorry. But I show it like quite a bit in the other one. I just don't wanna lift up the paper right now because I already have paper like underneath so that I can start tracing off the last couple pieces. So uh, let's see. This one you can't see yet. But so I already did half of the pattern completely. I didn't cut them all out yet, but let's see. I definitely cut out at least one. So this is one completed pattern piece. I traced it from the pattern that is laying flat on the table, and I added a, a half inch of seam allowance all the way around this thing. And then I also... I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but I marked on there um, what the pattern piece is. So that says back one. I marked what color fabric I'm going to use, which is black. And then I marked how many times I'm going to cut out this piece. So I'm going to cut it twice. And then let's see. 
Um, these ones just need to be cut out. So they're already drawn just like that one is, but they are not cut out yet. So we're just gonna leave them behind and then after you will cut them out. I'm sorry if like me rambling the paper is really loud. I'm going to try not to ruffle, rustle the paper, not ramble, rustle the paper as much as possible. This one, I just need to uh, finish drawing out the lines, but it's already traced. And now let me show you the process of tracing the pattern pieces. So I already did, I have six pieces right here that I'm gonna make, six pattern pieces. I've already traced off four of them. I already put paper underneath and let's see. So now all I have to do is I'm taking this tool right here. And yesterday I showed you the wheelie tools. One is super duper spice, spiky and this one is a little less spiky. Since this paper is really thin and I don't wanna damage my table, I'm gonna use the less spiky one. And you're literally just gonna trace the lines um, for this panel. And you can't really see it because my paper is laying flat, but the way that I'm easily able to distinguish the panels is one, I've labeled all of the panels. And then also I traced all of the back panel pieces in orange colored pencil after I finished the pattern. And then I traced all of the front um, panel pieces in blue after I finished the pattern. And this was just because the patterns actually do overlap because it's a flare leg. So you just don't, it gets very, very confusing if you don't color, color them. And so now I'm just gonna go through and push down um, pretty hard onto the pieces. And also just make sure, double, triple check that your paper is underneath all parts of the panel because that would be so frustrating if you start to trace it and it doesn't actually cover the whole piece. I'm gonna try not to get in the way of the camera. Okay, and then I just have one little bit left. Okay, so now what you do after you traced it is you slide that piece of paper out from underneath and let's see. Now this is when you need kind of good eyes to be able to do this. All right, so there's little, there's no way you'd be able to see this on the camera, but there is little perforations wherever I rolled over it. Once you find those, just start tracing over it with a ruler. If any edges are super curved, you can use a curved ruler also to make sure those come out properly, or you can just um, trace it out in really small increments. That also works. And just keep in mind, if certain lines look slightly wavy, really think about your pattern piece and where it's supposed to be curved and where it's supposed to be straight because we just freehand um, drew with this. So, you know, it does wave a little bit. So don't make your line like this when it's uh, meant to be straight. If you see it bow in a little bit, but you know the line is supposed to be straight, trust your instincts.
Okay, so once you trace out the pattern, this is the initial trace it, tracing, then you are going to go through and one erase lines if like you went way off. Okay. So now you are gonna go through and you are going to trace, uh, what are you gonna do? Let me think. You're gonna add the seam allowance. And really quickly before I add the seam allowance, I know that these outer lines are straight with the center seam. So I'm gonna add my straight grain marking, which I just add right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark label this pattern so we don't get confused. So this is the front panel two. And we want it to be black in color and we want to cut out two pieces. Since there's multiple numbers on um, this pattern, like it's front panel two, and then there's also a part that says cut two, always circle the number that you want to be the cutting number. So you write cut two, circle that two, and only that two, because it's just a good habit to get into, even though you're making your own pattern. If you were going to have someone like a cutter read this pattern, they're gonna cut the circled number. So it just makes it clear. So I'm going to add seam allowance. I'm just making this easy for myself. I'm giving a seam allowance of a half an inch all the way around this pattern, all of the patterns for actually to be specific. And I am close. I cut it really, really close with this um, piece of paper where uh, it's just about, let me fix this, not looking straight, um, where I almost don't have enough paper on the edge. I do, it looks like I just enough, like it's just a half an inch where the paper cuts off. If though for any reason you have a little bit where you don't have enough paper on it, it's okay. Like you don't have to redo this whole thing. We're just, we'll tape a little extra scrap of paper right there, finish off the line and it's no big deal. especially for these initial pattern pieces, because you never know this, um, we could end up making a lot of adjustments to this pan to this pattern and then need to make a whole new piece at the end of the day. So it's better to just get the pattern made, put it in the muslin and decide from there what we wanna do. If we end up loving the pattern, then we probably would want to remake the pieces so that they are perfect, but just so that we could hang on to them and reuse them over and over again. So on today's stream, my goal is to get this pattern done, get all the panels cut out, and hopefully we can get them put into muslin, and then I'll try on the muslin, and we will see how it looks and if we need to make any adjustments to it.
Okay, so this piece is now done. I'm just gonna set it aside because we're gonna I'm gonna cut them all out at one time. Do my work kind of in batches. So this piece, I also just like I traced the last piece with the um, pinwheel tool. I also did it to this one before I got on the stream. So I'm also going to trace the perforated marks on this one and create this pattern piece. So after the live stream yesterday, uh, or during the live stream yesterday, I said that I was going to get off the stream and probably uh, binge the show Modern Love that I had started, and I did, and I did finish it. Um, at least season one. If there was more than one season, I didn't. I didn't double check that, but I'm pretty sure there was only one season, and I finished it. And I highly recommend that show. Again, it's like a show kind of like um, Black Mirror where every single episode is unrelated and they're just all on this, a similar theme, which is um, love stories in New York City. Some of them are like more long term, like the couples stay together or but most of them are not. Most of them are like brief love affairs and it, it's really interesting um i'm really into romantic movies so that could be one one reason i really like it but they're they have like a lot of twists you think it's going in one direction and it can really surprise you not all the episodes are great there was a couple episodes that i thought were whatever but i highly recommend if you're gonna watch it at least watch just the first episode because the first episode and what's the last episode? The first up, there's about two or three episodes that are spectacular, but I think the first one is the absolute best, honestly. Um, it's just so heart wrenching and beautiful. So I highly recommend that. And it's not your typical love story at all. That one is not even really a love story. So highly recommend, highly recommend. Now I have to find another show to watch. Okay, so now again, I'm going to add the um, seam allowance, which is half an inch all the way around the pattern piece. And then I just have one more panel to do to trace off and do this to. And then I can cut them out and then we can put it in the muslin, which is going to be super exciting. Except for that I didn't iron the muslin yet, so it's going to be very wrinkly. So I might have to iron that. Uh, another thing I would definitely recommend you check out. When I was prepping these pattern pieces um, right before this stream, I was listening to Maura Mitchell's um, latest YouTube videos and her videos are really great because a lot of them are more of a narration and so you can continue working or doing whatever you're doing 
while listening to them. Not all of them. Some of them are really visually beautiful, so I do recommend that you watch those ones. Um, but she has these, um, what is it, like uh, topic-based ones called Wine and Whiskey, where she kind of just talks about personal growth and relationships and all different interesting topics. And I was listening to a couple before I jumped on the stream, and I highly, highly recommend. She is posting a video for the next 60 days straight. Well, she started maybe like a week ago. So she's been posting for a week, and then she wants to post a total of 60 days straight. So she always has new content coming out, and that is why I have been posting as much as I'm posting because um, – I started following right behind her the day after her, trying to post 60 days consecutively. So we will see how that goes. I think this is day six, maybe? Maybe. Which is very surprising for me. I feel like I have not sold this much in a very, very long time. Which is also kind of funny because I haven't been actually technically sewing that much. Like the last uh, couple videos of the high-waisted pants. Because this is video three, I think, of making these pants. Um, we have not sewed in any of them yet. And we may not sew in. No, we, we will hopefully sew at the end of this one. But yeah. So I haven't actually been sewing too much in the streams. But... Overall, I've been sewing quite a bit. Okay, so we got this pan, this um, pattern piece done. We literally only have one left, so that is super exciting. And in order to do the last piece, I'm just going to slide this um, untouched piece of paper underneath. And the reason you can't trace off all of the pieces at one time, um, if you are wondering about that, is because you want there to be room around the piece that you trace so that you can add the half inch seam allowance to it. So if we would have just traced all of them at one time, one after each other on the same sheet of paper, um, we wouldn't have had room for seam allowance, which is super duper important. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, I did like one. Hmm. 
my foot fell asleep from the way I was sitting. This feels very uncomfortable right now. Okay, so now you're gonna slide this piece out and we are gonna trace off all of the sides just like we just did on the other ones. Okay, so I am looking for my curve. Okay, this is frustrating. I don't see it. I'm looking for my French curve because as I'm tracing this, I'm tracing like the crotch area right now, which is very curved. And it would look a lot nicer. Oh, there it is. Okay, the problem with having all clear tools, I try to draw on it and stuff so that I can actually see it, but oh, that is the issue with all these things being clear. They are awesome when you are working with them because you can see what's happening on the paper underneath the ruler or the curve, but to find it sometimes is so frustrating. Okay.
We are going to put our label on it. This one is front panel three. We want it to be in black. <laughs> and we want to cut out two pieces. I feel like I'm being extremely quiet on this stream, like more quiet than I am normally, but I don't know what it is. Maybe because it's late or I haven't had enough coffee. I did make coffee for this stream. Oops, sorry. I just make drop everything, ruffle all the paper and make all these loud noises. I'm sorry. I also listened to today um, a new episode of The Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard. If you haven't heard it, it's my favorite part about Mondays because they always post a new episode on Mondays. And it's always good. I absolutely love The Armchair Expert. They post about two episodes a week um, for The Actual Armchair Expert, and then they have a spin-off series called Monica and Jess Love Boys that they post, I believe, it's either on Wednesdays or Fridays. I'm not 100% sure. It might be, it might alternate. I'm not sure. Um, but I highly recommend uh, that podcast. It's my favorite one at the moment. Uh, there's a couple other podcasts that I that I have been listening to quite frequently, um, but this one, especially the Monica and Jess Love Boys bit, is just so fascinating. It's kind of like interviews with, well, not that bit, the normal um, armchair expert is interviews with celebrities, but it's not based on like just the work they do. It's more based on their personal life, their story, how they... Um, kind of achieve success, what they've been through in their life and um, their upbringing. So I find it really fascinating. I'm someone who's really into um, biographies and learning about how people um, kind of get to where they are in life. So for me, um, it's kind of like right up my alley. But if you're into any of that stuff, I definitely recommend it. Whereas Monica and Jess Love Boys is more of a personal journey like it's two people that are trying to find love and they've never really had true love like Jess a little bit has he has had three boyfriends Monica never and they are coming at it from polar opposite sides of the spectrum so Monica um who is also the producer for the regular armchair expert so that's one of the the main reasons uh if you get into armchair expert you will more like more you'll be more likely to feel attached to monica's journey and like want her to find love and all that stuff because she's just such a great person and she's really fun to listen to and hear her story on the armchair expert so now to hear her like journey with trying to find someone that she's attracted to um, is very interesting. 
So they get, they have like experts come on that have to do with like dating. Like they had Dr. Drew on, they had, um, Patty something, the millionaire matchmaker. She used to have a show on Bravo. I'm going to be completely honest. That was my least favorite episode. She's too blunt and abrupt, abrasive really for me. Um, so I didn't really care for that one. They also had Esther Perel on who is fascinating. Um, I've listened to some of her TED Talks before and she is really, really um, knowledgeable about relationships, um, sex, and just everything around those topics. Um, and she was one of the most thoughtful. I thought her, I believe her and Dr. Drew were the two that were really good at giving um, advice and like digging into what was really going on with them. And just kind of like calling them out on their bullshit. And it was really interesting. Uh, yeah, so I highly recommend that. There's an episode even with uh, Kristen Bell that she um, kind of gives them a little bit of advice and interviews them on their relationships and all that stuff. And that episode is insightful, but more than insightful, it's just straight up hilarious. And I would highly recommend that you listen to that episode as well. So now I am just going to start cutting out all of the pattern pieces now that we have all six of them. And I know this is a huge waste of paper, or at least it seems like it, with especially all the excess um, that we're cutting away from the patterns. I actually usually like to keep um, like the larger parts of paper aside, at least for a while after, um, like while I'm like working out the kinks of the pattern and stuff, because you'll end up using a lot of those scraps um, throughout the process. So it might look super wasteful now, but trust me, we can use that. We can make smaller pattern pieces out of a lot of this paper. And we also might need to make edits, which involves taking smaller scraps of paper and like taping them on. Okay, so one more piece is complete. Do we have two pieces complete right there? I'm not sure.
You want to cut out all your pieces before you move on to start putting them in the muslin because then you can kind of, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Like you're going to want to put down all the pieces at once and kind of move them around so that you can fit as many pieces into the smallest amount of muslin as humanly possible. It's how you um, prevent waste. and then we are going to put this in muslin. messaging me a lot of times. It's a little bit distracting. So I'm thinking tomorrow, on tomorrow's stream, which I want to do, maybe I'll do it, I'm going to do it a lot early in the day. Like I think I'm going to try to do it by like one o'clock and I hopefully will be nearing the end of the construction of these pants, which is exciting or like not the end, but like we'll actually be working with the denim material and stuff, which is the most exciting part. Uh, but yeah, I want to live stream maybe at like one o'clock, but I think what I'm going to do is, um, listen and kind of review, you know, give my opinion, we'll see, to this mixtape that is coming out tomorrow. It's not necessarily all the type of music I would normally listen to, um, but it's actually my boyfriend's mixtape and it's coming out tomorrow and I've only heard I think one of the songs on the mixtape out of 10. So what better time to listen to it all the way through than with everyone on the live stream and we can give our opinion together while we listen to it and while we create these high-waisted pants. So that's the plan for tomorrow. If I forget, remind me, but I really don't think I will. <laughs> and it will be much nicer to listen to than listening to the ruffling of paper.
Well, then again, I haven't heard the music yet, so we'll see. Just kidding. I'm dreading tomorrow already because I have to go to the airport tomorrow and I live super far uptown in Manhattan and I have to go to JFK, which is not the airport I normally go to. And I really don't want to waste money on an Uber or anything. I'd much rather take the train, but that involves, um, almost two hours of travel. And I just want to do it first thing in the morning, get it out of the way, be back by one o'clock to do the live stream. Hopefully I'll be back by noon. But I just am not looking forward to it at all. I honestly have been like staying up really late. I just haven't been able to sleep. So I've been going to sleep at like 3 to 5 a.m. every night, which is very unusual for me. I normally am sleeping by midnight at the latest. So to be staying up that late I has really messed up my schedule, and I've been sleeping in super late as well to make up for it. I'm the type of person that kind of needs like 12 hours of sleep. So that's been a struggle because yesterday I slept to like 5 p.m. It's not an exaggeration. So today I didn't. Today I think I got up at like 10 a.m., which was a lot better <laughs> than 5 p.m. But still, tomorrow my goal is to get up a lot earlier than that because I want to get to JFK which is so far away. I'm just really dreading it. And get back here in order to do the live stream. Maybe we'll do a little bit longer of a live stream tomorrow since we're going to be reviewing the music. And um, also, you know, we kind of want to see what happens with these pants. I might be having to travel um, for the next uh, six days. Uh, not tomorrow, but following tomorrow, which is why I have to go to the airport and get some stuff done. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can get these things done. I don't think I will be able to do any work on the jeans. I just want to fold this up a little bit just so it can stay out of the way. So I'm trying to make as little noise as possible. All right, I'm just going to set it aside for now. Okay, so now here comes the muslin, and I'm hoping I can find some pieces that are not crazy wrinkled so that I don't have to iron it right away. Actually, yeah, this seems like this might be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out on the table. We are actually going to fold it in. Are we going to fold it in half? How do we want to make these, these pants? Do we want to make... What I'm thinking about now is if I want to make a full sample of the pants, I'm stepping on a lot of paper right now. <laughs> That's why I'm like acting so weird. Okay. All right. Um, I'm thinking, do I want to cut two pieces of all of these pattern pieces and make an actual full version of the pants in this muslin or do do I just want to do half? I usually do half. It's a lot less wasteful to do half, um, but I don't know what would be better to show you for the live stream. You know what? We really want to use get into the real denim tomorrow, so let's just do half. We are going to be able to tell if we like them or not by the half. And... Yeah, let's do this. Let's try to whip these out, honestly. I wanna try to pin all this, cut all this, and try this out. This muslin is a little bit wrinkled, but that's all right. So 
So I don't know why I'm folding in half. Guys, stop me. We don't need to fold in half because I just decided that we're not gonna do that. So, okay, cool. So we're just laying it out. It is kind of wrinkled, but we're gonna live with it because that's the life we're living right now. We're putting some weights down so it doesn't slip and slide all over the place. And now let's grab our pattern pieces. Now it doesn't matter if they are, you want them all to be right side up by the way, because they, because we're only sewing like one half of the pant and yeah, none of them have to be reversed. Try to make sure all of your grain lines are in line with the grain line, the grain line of the muslin. This has us um, the salvage edge of the muslin, which is the edge that looks like it was professionally finished. That's still on this. Um, so just line up your, your grain lines with that. Doesn't matter if you know, the tops are all here, the bottoms are all there. You actually are gonna probably be able to fit more pieces if you flip them going like, kind of like back and forth, like have the top on this end, top over here, because the bottoms are gonna be wider than the tops. But just make sure that these are straight with the salvage. That's all that matters. So keep that straight. And after, like just lay them out and then after you can kind of go back through with a ruler and make sure that it actually is. And you can move some of these weights out of the way so that, yeah. Just double check, everything's lining up with the salvage. You can get a little bit closer. Perfecto. And if we know this line is straight, then we can check if that line is straight from that line. And that's how you get away with not having such a long ruler. So that's actually fine. Take one of these. Okay, so, so far this is only half of the pieces that I have laid down, but that's fine because I'm going to start pinning these pieces so that once we get these ones pinned, then we can move our fabric and make room to pin the next set on. Let me make sure this one's straight. Cool, perfect. That is awesome, add a couple more weights. All right, now let's get to pinning. I like to use, this is my favorite way to use my pins. Um, most of you have probably seen this before, but if you haven't, it's a magnet, so your pins aren't supposed to fall off everywhere, but I kind of swung it around so it did because that's a lot of pins on it, but that's fine. I'm pretty sloppy. Um, people don't really like to walk on my studio floor because I get pins everywhere, but I rarely ever step on them. So for me, it's fine. But that's what's good about the magnet is that you can go back through and pick them up after. 
or maybe if like you're having visitors, maybe, you know, quickly go around the room and try to pick up as many as possible. Depends how considerate you are. Oh, by the way, side note, I talked to my grandma today and she did get the masks in the mail that I made her and she loved them. So that was absolutely perfect. They actually were useful. I'm going to be honest, this is, I feel like this is the first time I pinned something like this on this table and I'm hating it because it feels like I'm digging the pins into the table. I'm trying not to, like, I'm trying to keep the pattern straight and not move it as I pin it. I'm gonna move all of the pieces in unison once I pin this section of them and then pin the end of them. Just because my table is not that big. Okay, I keep grabbing a needle, it's super annoying. They don't pin the same way as pins do. And don't put too, be careful, don't put too many pins on when you're doing this. You don't need tons of pins because these are mainly straight lines. I feel like even I'm putting quite a lot on. Like, I'm saying that I don't sleep at night and I stay up so late until like 5 a.m. And here I am drinking a coffee during my live stream at 10.30 at night. This is not how you form good habits, people. Do not listen to me or do as I do. Actually, as far as habits go, um, I'm, I am a part of this accountability group. I probably have mentioned it before. I'm not sure in what capacity, but I'm a part of this accountability group called Walking Produce, where it's for creatives, and we kind of just hold each other accountable for what we're trying to do with our lives. And 
wow, did I just like totally lose my train of thought halfway through that statement? As what was I saying? As far as oh, tiny habits go. Is that what I was talking about? Yeah, habits. As far as habits go. We are changing our current like focus to tiny habits. So I had to choose a habit. Whoops. The people below me hate me. I drop heavy objects on the ground all day and night. Okay. So we're on the last pattern piece. So I had to pick a tiny habit for the accountability group. And it's a tiny habit that I'm going to focus on growing all month. Because if you know anything about habits, you really shouldn't try to grow too many habits at one time um, because it's just less likely to stick. Some people are better than others. Some people, you know, are just ready for a huge change in their life and they're able to take on and do so much at one time. But for the majority of us, doing too much at once is not sustainable over the long run. You really need to build tiny habits Um slowly and one at a time. So the habit that I want to focus on is actually waking up early. That's what I decided. Um, it's something that, so waking up early has not always been as hard for me as it currently is. Like currently I just can't sleep at night. Therefore I am not waking up early, but I think I just need to suffer being tired a couple days in order to fix this habit because I don't normally sleep till 5 p.m. at night. That's crazy. I norm I would like to wake up really early. Like I would like to be comfortably waking up at like 6 a.m. Um, especially on days that I'm not working. My day job at least. And uh yeah, so but currently, so I went from normally, I feel like I normally would naturally wake up around eight or nine. And that's how it's been for like quite a few months. And then over the past like three weeks, um, just with my change in my schedule, like I haven't been working as much as I normally do. Uh, I ended up, you know, creating this horrible habit of staying up later. And then now I just cannot sleep at night. So... That's what I want to do. I want to create the habit of waking up, but how am I going to create the habit of waking up early? I know a lot of people say, well, you have to, you know, start with going to bed early, but that's um, not really a sustainable, that's not really a tiny habit. A tiny habit is something that grows off of something else. It's very small. So the attention, the intention may be waking up early, but what is going to be the tiny moment that makes it so you wake up early so for me I am going to uh I am going to try to go to bed at a more reasonable time for sure like tonight I'm going to try to go to bed no later than midnight last night I think I went to bed again at like 5 a.m so that's horrible um so midnight would be a huge improvement but then I'm also going to set my alarm I usually set it on the other side of my room but I might set it in my closet or something. Of course, I'll keep the door open. But I really want to make it so that it's as far away from my bed as possible. And the tiny habit, the one step, because I already set my alarm every day. And I always get out of bed and turn my alarm off. These are all things I already do every single day. Is set an alarm and get up and turn off my alarm. The one thing I refrain from doing every day is actually staying out of bed. So that is going to be my one thing is when I turn off my alarm, I cannot go to back to bed. So I need to create a tiny habit between turning off my alarm and going back to bed. So I think the tiny habit is I'm going to have a cup of coffee. I'm going to pre set up all of this in order because I have no problem like setting up before I go to sleep. Like that's not stressful to me or that doesn't feel like a lot. So I'm going to set out my coffee cup, which a lot of nights I do. Um, I'm going to make sure that, so we use a water boiler to create our coffee. We usually just make instant coffee. Um, it's just a habit we got into. We really like it. We prefer instant coffee now instead of regular coffee. We're weird like that. So anyways, we are going, or so I'm going to set up because when I hit my, um, 
my lever to like turn on the boiling water. Please don't throw that on the ground. <laughs> Scared myself. Uh, what is it called? When I hit the lever to turn on the uh, boiling water, I need to make sure ahead of time, like the night before, that I have the outlet turned on. I'm gonna turn on the outlet the, the tonight. And so I, my tiny habit, I think, is gonna be just stay up, like don't go back to bed. Instead, go hit the water boiler. If I go and hit the water boiler and it turns on right away and I don't have to fuss and make sure the outlet's on and all of that, which you guys might be like, what are you talking about? outlets and all of this but I live in a New York apartment we only have a couple outlets in our apartment we have two in the living room slash my brother's bedroom and then we have two in my bedroom and we have one in the bathroom and it doesn't work so we have to have like towers to plug more stuff in like um surge protector towers so um we had a problem where we kept breaking um what is it called when you we kept blowing the circuit breaker or whatever uh, because, you know, and losing power in our apartment because we had too many outlets plugged into one thing. So now we have a tower where we actually like turn off like different, different appliances. And so we have to make sure the appliance where it's plugged, where that appliance is plugged in is on. You don't care about any of this, but I'm just rambling for no reason. So we have to make sure that one is on in order to um, be able to, what am I trying to say? In order to be able to use that appliance. So you have to turn the power on and then you turn the appliance on. So what I'm saying is I'm gonna turn the power on the night before and then I'm gonna also leave out my coffee mug I and I'm gonna leave the coffee even, I'm even gonna scoop up. A coffee in it ahead of time I think I am at least for the first couple nights I really don't like the idea of leaving my coffee like out in a mug but our apartment is very clean but the first couple nights to make it easy for myself I am going to hit the boiler and I'm going to have a mug out with my coffee already in it and so that way that will keep me up and instead of some mornings if I do wake up really early and I do make a cup of coffee so I, I have done this before, like made a cup of coffee right away in the morning, but then I always bring it back to my bed and then I end up falling asleep before I even drink the cup of coffee. I'm the type of person that can genuinely sleep for 12 hours and feel amazing. Like I would rather sleep for 12 hours. I would actually probably be fine if I slept for 14 hours. I can do with a lot of sleep. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but um, so I want to change that though. So the plan is I'm going to make a cup of coffee and I just have to stay up. I can't go sit. I can't go back into my bedroom area. So what I'm going to do is sit out in the hallway and have, enjoy my cup of coffee, maybe journal. You know, maybe I'll even leave my journal out there like in the living room area or like the coffee nook area to start that right away in the morning. So yeah, that's going to be my tiny habit. I don't know if any of you care, but I will let you know tomorrow how that went. So we only have two more pattern pieces to add right now. I'm super excited about this. I'm actually like so excited about tomorrow's live stream. Now that like I have this like almost completely done. Um, like the muslin, like I just have to cut these out. We'll definitely get that done. Then we're going to sew it together. We're going to test it out. And then tomorrow we can start putting it potentially into the denim while listening to um, Tyrus's mixtape. Uh, this is, it's going to be great. I'm really excited. His mixtape comes out at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So if we do it at noon, we will definitely be able to listen to the entire thing. Yeah. 
I love how like I did it like so accurately. Like the first four pieces I did, I like measured it. I put the weights down and make sure, made sure it didn't move. And then I'm down to this one at the end and I just like slap it on there and pin it and don't even pay attention if it's on green. Do not, again, do not do as I do. I, sometimes I'm so lazy. Okay. Now. Now. I'm so excited. Make sure that is gonna, yep, that has plenty of room. Okay, I'm actually gonna get these cut out on this stream. Like, I am super excited about this. So I have to definitely go, no matter how far I get, I have to go in 15 minutes because I have a couple more things to do tonight for walking produce. Um, we always post a video at the end of the day on that YouTube channel, which is kind of just like an update of like how we did the previous week and if we're accomplishing our goals and all of those things. And so I am definitely gonna go over to that channel and post really quickly um, to make sure it is on time. Okay, so we wanna fold this over. But I still have about 15 minutes before I have to do that. And I did actually um, sharpen. I know I said a couple times that my sh um, cutting, uh, cutting, what is the word? My shears for cutting fabric are a bit dull or were a bit dull. And I actually bought um, some tin foil and I sliced into it a couple times to um, sharpen up the shears which is a good at home solution to sharpening your shears so let's I also am excited to test them out and see if it helped at all because they were very very dull so let's see do we know where they are I think they fell on the floor before oh yeah, yeah they're right there all right I definitely just hit my head on a hanger as I went to do that, but that is fine. All right, so let's test this out. You you always want to be cutting away from you. And you want long strides, not short ones. What the heck? That's only letting me do short ones. That was so weird. test this out. Oh yeah, that's good. It's like one part that I don't like how it's doing it. It's like really dull in one part. Wow, I hate that. No, it's like messed up in one part. I see that now. Okay, let me try this again. Yeah, they're, they are sharper. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, maybe I'm completely wrong and that's not a good way to do it. No, it definitely is. But there's like, I see a nick in them. And it happens to be right where I like to start the cut. If I start the cut lower, see it cuts really nicely now. But there's that one nick in it. Which maybe I did that. I don't know. Let 
but they were really, really blunt before. Never run your finger against these. Like, these are sharp as hell. I always do that and end up cutting myself with an idiot. Okay. Whatever. I'm annoyed by these. <laughs> I want to use different scissors. <laughs> It's just that one spot. I'm gonna have to get, you know what? I'll be right back. Let's try this. I don't know if I like accidentally cut like too much at one time when I was doing this before. Let's try it now. Please work. It's just that one spot. <clears throat> okay. Well. Oh, no, it's better. Okay, wow. Okay, that was a lot better. Now let's see if we can try to cut some of these long parts. Because you don't want short. You want long clean cuts. It's like partly working and partly not working. This is not what you want to be doing at all. This is how not to cut something. Okay, there we go. Wow, you're like really seeing me struggle right now. I hate these. I'm gonna need to get them professionally. Fixed. I feel like professionally sharpened. I'm holding it down because I don't have that many pins in this piece. So I like to only cut with the pattern on the right side of my scissors. So then, and I cut away from me. So then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And it's a lot. Okay, now it's fixed. Now it's cutting normally. Okay, I'm going to stop saying that because every time it's cutting normally, then it starts to jam up. What the heck? Okay. not just going and getting other scissors is because these are my only like big shears my other um really sharp scissors are super small so it's going to be annoying to do such long cuts with them okay this one is completely cut yay one down we still have eight minutes so if my shears behave we might be able to get this all knocked out so when you only cut with the pattern on the right side it's kind of like your guide 
it keeps the line really, really straight, and it's perfect. I'm very happy with it. Okay, so we're just going to keep going down the line because I think that's going to be the fastest way to do it. Well, we're staying all right. We're pretty straight. That's perfect. Right, slide these two on here. This one seems like it. We want. We might want to. I'm just cutting them these two pieces apart because I feel like it might be heavy and pull on the piece as I'm trying to cut it out, and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just cutting it off. I'm not cutting it out perfectly yet. Well, right, that one little section I did, but the rest of it I didn't. See, it's getting caught again. Okay, cool. So, move this one out of the way. We'll do that one last. Now we want to just turn it here, and now we're going to do this curve fit. the stream already or all of a sudden not already already one and a half hours in <laughs> all of a sudden hey guys welcome we are almost getting to the interesting part so I am about to end the stream in four minutes um so we're just cutting out the pattern pieces in the muslin fabric right now which means that on the next stream tomorrow which I'm thinking about doing in the afternoon at like 1 p.m ish don't hold me to it but that's what my plan is um that means when we come back we're gonna be able to test what the pants look like in the muslin if we like it go ahead put it in the denim if we need to make any adjust adjustments we'll do it then and then we'll go ahead and hopefully get it put in the muslin at least part way tomorrow and I'm super excited for that. All right, two pieces are completely cut out. My goal right now is just to cut out all the muslin pieces tonight. Oh, make sure you turn it around. And like I was saying before, you just want to make sure you cut um, always cut away from yourself and have the pattern on the right hand of the scissors. Or at least this is for someone who's right-handed. If you're left-handed, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Okay. 
And again, my scissors are really acting up and I hate them so much right now. does make a huge difference cutting this very specific way so that is why I keep turning the fabric around and around okay and now we are going to do this one and we're going to turn this one All of a sudden, I'm super excited because I'm almost done. I am just wrapping up by finishing this final piece, final, uh, finish cutting this final piece out. And I just want to wrap it up as I cut this one out. And I want to let you know one last time, go ahead, check out Maura Mitchell's channel. She is the whole reason I have been coming on and doing these live streams and posting every single day for the past week. And um, her channel is excellent. It's completely different than mine. Her last video that she made, um, I believe was on, I think it was on Tiny Habits and she looked through um, a habit journal. So that's also on theme with what I was telling you about, about what I was telling you about, about, <laughs> about, what I'm doing with walking produce and how we are focusing on tiny habits and how I'm trying to wake up early. So definitely she was writing in a habit journal, which I've actually never done or seen before. I think I've heard of them, but I've never really looked closely at one. So if you are interested in building some habits, it's a great video to check out. I will link her in the description and then um, also just remember I plan on finishing these up tomorrow at hopefully around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Let's do a little earlier live stream. Hopefully maybe then I'll be a little bit more alive, a little bit more talkative, and we can listen to and review um, Artie Tyrus's mixtape that he did with Little Dre, which drops tomorrow at 10 a.m., I believe. So it should be an interesting one. And I am just super duper excited to actually be seeing how these fit because they've been in my mind for a while. And I just can't wait to bring them to life. So join me tomorrow. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to finish cutting the last and final strip of this pattern. And then I'm going to call it night so that maybe tomorrow I can actually wake up early. Thank you guys again for watching and being patient with me as it takes about five videos to finish one project. But um, it's been great. So thank you. And I will see you again tomorrow.